Hello, and welcome to Biodiversity Museum Day. My name is Avery Zonnelly, and I'm a graduate student in Jason Bond's lab here at UC Davis in the Department of Entomology and Nematology. In the Bond lab, we work on the evolution of spiders and millipedes. And um, I highly encourage you, if you like this talk, to also check out uh, the talk by my lab mate, Lacey Newton. She'll be talking about diversity of arachnids, including spiders and scorpions. This talk's gonna be about millipedes though. Um, you may not know that there are over 12,000 species of described millipedes uh, known to science and thousands more yet to be described. Um, however, for the purposes of this talk, we're going to be focusing just on the millipedes that are most commonly found in the sort of greater Sacramento and San Francisco Bay areas. Um, so if you want to go out looking for millipedes, where would you find them? The answer is mostly in forests and woodlands. And the reason for this is that most millipedes are detritivores. They're decomposers that feed on the um, plant material that is mostly decaying, rotting wood um, from fallen logs and leaf litter that is discarded leaves on the forest floor. And they will eat that decaying organic material, break it down into smaller chunks, which helps other decomposers also access it. Decomposers like fungus, um, various bacteria, and other microbes. Some millipedes are also fungivores. That means that they eat the fungus. So that also means that you're going to most likely find them um, on the forest floor in decaying plant material like um, rotting logs. So if you want to go finding millipedes, the easiest way is probably to just start turning over any sort of good rotting logs you see. So if you're a millipede collector, suddenly every rotting log on the forest floor looks like mm, maybe a bonanza of millipedes. You never know. Another good place to find them is just under the bark of logs um, or decaying sticks like the one I'm holding in this picture. I was very excited in this picture because I found the millipedes I was looking for. But what exactly is a millipede? They're rather similar to insects, but they don't belong to the group Insecta. Instead, they belong to a group called Myriapoda. Um, so Myriapoda is a group of arthropods. And the name Myriapoda means many legs. You think of the word myriad, which uses the same word root, simply means a lot of or many. And pod means a leg or a foot. I think it's an apt name because no animals on land have as many legs as myriapods do. There are two groups of myriapods you're most likely to encounter. Those are the centipedes and the millipedes. Let's break the name down again. Here, centi means 100, like a centimeter is 100th of a meter. And ped, uh, again, is a variant of pod, again, it means foot or leg. Um, the defining characteristic of centipedes is that each of their segments has a single pair of legs. Um, and as to the accuracy of the name centipede, it is true that some centipedes have over 100 legs, although they may have as few as around 44 legs, I think. Um, at any rate, um, they don't have to have 100 legs. In contrast, the name millipede means 1,000 legs. Um, their defining feature is having two pairs of legs on each segment. So that means in general, a millipede with the same number of segments as a centipede is going to have more legs. Um, so we can generally think of millipedes as having more legs than centipedes, although it varies from species to species. Um, it is not true that there are any millipedes known with a thousand legs, at least known to science yet. It seems unlikely considering um, that they haven't been discovered yet, but you never know. The record holder, however, does have 750 legs. It's a millipede called Alacme planipes, and it has a truly absurd number of legs. It's a very strange animal. You can only imagine what a thousand legs might look like if theoretically there was a millipede that did have a thousand legs. So I'm gonna go through um, the most common types of millipedes uh, here in uh, Northern California. And I'm going to describe uh, the name of the order of each millipede. So um, millipedes are divided up into large groups 
full of um, you know hundreds or thousands of species. Each group is called an order, and the different orders have different ways of living and different body shapes. So the first order we're going to talk about is a really weird one called the bristle millipedes, um, and uh, in California they'll most likely belong to the genus Polyzenus. These guys are really, really, really tiny, um, and you're mostly going to find them uh, under tree bark or just on tree bark. Um, they're covered in tons of little bristles called CD. And the reason they have all these bristles is to help defend them from predators. Makes it very hard to grasp onto them. Maybe the bristles would break off if you try to grasp them as a predator. And it also makes it harder to fit into your mouth. Um, there is a type of animal that looks very similar to a bristle millipede, and that is the larva of what we call a carpet beetle. Um, so the larvae of carpet beetles like to gnaw on uh, textiles, for example, or carpets. Um, so if you have mothballs, if you have to have mothballs to protect your clothes or your carpets, um, these guys might be part of the problem. Uh, these guys might be the reason you have mothballs, <laughs> that you have to have mothballs. Um, but unlike the bristle millipede, which has a very bushy little tail here um, of bristles, uh, the carpet beetle does not. So that's an easy way to differentiate them if you're unsure which is which. Next is another weird millipede. This is a type of pill millipede, um, the species Glomeroides primus. It belongs to the order Glomerida, which is characterized by being able to roll up into a ball. Um, now, you might confuse these with a pill bug, which is actually a type of crustacean, not a type of millipede. Um, so here's a pill millipede rolled up. And let's compare it to a pill bug. Uh, the main features that differentiate them are that the pill millipede has rounded antennae. You can see them here, big fat rounded antennae, whereas the pill bug has very pointed antennae. Another feature is that the pill bug has several segments all fused together into a single plate um, as its final segment, whereas the pill millipede has just a single whole segment, not made of other fused segments. So these are the easiest ways to differentiate. If you come across a pill millipede, the next order is called Polyzoneida. One of the most common polyzoneids you might find in California is called Buzonium chrysippes. Um, now the features that, de that define Polyzoneida are having a sort of lens shaped body here in cross section. You can see that here where the edge of the body uh, is along this ridge. And they also have sort of like a, a, a hat that covers their head and they have a very, very small pointed shaped head. Um, these guys are probably going to find um, underneath logs or underneath bark. Another type of polyzoneid millipede is the genus Octoglenna. Um, they are uh, characterized by having a body shape similar to a leech. So a leech is a type of parasitic worm that has lots of segments and a really, really sort of fat wide body that tapers off quickly at both ends. And Octoglenna shares that shape, which is why um, you might call it the leech millipede. The next order is called platydesmida, platy meaning flat. Um, and one of the most common ones is the genus Brachycybe. So these guys have tons and tons of segments and each segment has a flat plate sticking out on either side sort of like uh, little winglets. And um, you can see the aggregate effect of all of these little plates put together makes them look sort of very um, wide and flattened. Um, these guys are fungivores. So you can see them on a fungus substrate here. That's what they're eating, like their food. And they really, really like oak logs in particular. One of the really cool, unique features of Brachycybe is that they are subsocial. That is, they have overlapping generations that occur together, 
and the adults help care for the juveniles. So you can find these guys in really, really large quantities. I have found them up to hundreds under a single log before. And you can imagine that since they are overlapping generations that that log that you turned over probably has um, been the home for um, the ancestral home for multiple generations of feathered millipedes. The other type of feather millipede you might encounter is called Gosodesmus clermontis. Belongs again to the, to the feather millipede order Platydesmida. Uh, unlike Brachycybe, which are specialized on fungus that grows on oak logs, Gosodesmus are not very picky. You can find them under oak logs, pine logs. I found them under eucalyptus. Once I found them under a rotting plank. Um, and something that's really cool about these guys is the diversity of different color morphs that you can find. Um, so recently I was collecting along the Southern California coast and I found all sorts of different color variants. This is probably the most common color um, variant that you would find this sort of wine red color. Um, but at the exact same site at Big Sur, uh, Pfeiffer Big Sur State Park, indeed in the same log as this wine red one, I found also this orange colored variant, very, very bright orange. And as I worked my way, way, way down the coast, again, found some wine red colored ones. As I got further south, they get more orange colored. This was in the town of Cambria, and this was in Morro Bay. Um, and even more color variants, um, this weird one with sort of orange tipped, um, orange -tipped uh, plates at Fort Tejon Pass on I-5, and also this more orange colored one down in the Santa Monica Mountains near Pasadena. So very, very cool and come in all sorts of colors. As far as we know, this is all one species. Moving on to the order Cordumatida. <laughs> Corduma means sausage in Greek, so you might call them sausage millipedes. They have a sort of sausage shape about them. Um, they're not too long. And um, they're really, really fast, unusually for millipedes. Most millipedes are sort of sluggish in their response. But if you find a Cordumatidin, a sausage millipede, they're most likely to run really, really fast. Um, in terms of their behavior, they seem more like centipedes than millipedes. Um, and they're characterized by having three bristles on each side of the segment. Now, the one we're looking at here is a female, and this is a male. These belong to the genus Casea. And what you notice about the male is that he has these huge uh, genitalia um, that he uses when he mates with the female, and they're called gonopods. Let's get a closer look at those. The weird thing about gonopods is that they begin life as regular walking legs, and during the adults, uh, during the male's lifetime, they transform from walking legs to these specialized genitalia. And gonopods are really characteristic of millipedes in general. Um, most millipede groups have them. Now let's talk striated millipedes. These guys are really uh, sort of stunning in their appearance. They have all of these crests along the lengths of their uh, segments. This is the genus Striaria. It also belongs to the order Cordumatida. Um, and something that really defines them is having a large hooded column that is the segment just behind the head. You can see it here. Um, and they never have more than 32 segments. Now let's contrast that to another type of striated millipede, Tinoma, which is actually a member of a completely different order but convergently has a very similar appearance. It belongs to the order Calipodida. Um, a good way to differentiate these guys from Striaria, which we saw on the previous slide, is they have a narrower neck um, instead of having a large hooded segment behind the head. And they're going to have more segments, at least 40, usually around 50 to 60. Now let's talk Tylobolus. Um, so these guys belong to the millipede order Spirobolida. These guys are one of my favorite millipede groups. Um, they are really characteristic 
of oak woodlands here in California. Um, if you find a really old rotting soft log, um, uh, oak log, you're most likely going to find some tilobolus in it. Um, they're generally dark black or uh, brown or uh, black or dark brown. Um, and uh, they're pretty wide compared to a lot of other millipedes. They have wide segments compared to the length of their body. Um, and they have benzoquinones, which is a type of chemical uh, that they exude as a poison. So a lot of millipedes will have poison in order to ward off predators. That makes them bad to eat, so predators won't want to eat them. Let's take a look at some footage of a Tailobolus millipede that I collected last week. So once they're disturbed, they tend to be pretty sluggish and slow to move. But if you leave them for a while, they'll unroll and start to explore. Here we're going to get a good look at the anus of the millipede. Uh, you can see that there are valves on either side that close it off. But when it wants to poop, it opens those valves up and poops out a little pellet of dirt. You can see it tap, tap, tapping along with its antennae. Millipedes have poor vision and they use their antennae to help them get, get around. You can see that as it's been disturbed, it's exuded some of that poison onto my hand. It's usually sort of yellowish in color. And again, you can see it tapping around. Another type of large millipede that you might confuse for Tylobolus is Paramopus angusticeps. So these guys are also very large millipedes. They belong to the order Julida. And I think of them as being kind of snaky. Um, they have a tendency to be much more active and sort of squirmy than Tylobolus do. Um, and they're a little narrower and longer in terms of their body proportions. They also have these longitudinal striations, right? These little grooves along their um, uh, body segments, which is a, a good way to tell them apart from Tylobolus as well. They also have much longer and more slender legs and antennae. Another member of the order Julida is this family Parajulidae. I can't give you a specific genus or species name because they're not very well studied here in California. And I don't know that much about them, but they are still very cool and I wanted to show them to you. Um, they're usually smaller to medium sized, um, more of a model brown and black, as you can see in this upper photograph here. And like Paramopus, they can be really active and squirmy when you collect them. Um, and what's really, really fascinating and unique about them is that males have a gigantic swollen first pair of legs that they use for grasping the female during mating. Um, so you can see them on the underside here, taking up a huge amount of space near the front of the animal. You can also see the male's very large gonopods here. And that brings us to our final order, polydesmata, which are also known as flat-backed millipedes. There are a whole bunch of different kinds of flat-backed millipedes that you might encounter. If you're in a city or town, the most likely one you'll encounter is this greenhouse millipede, Oxidus gracilis. They get spread around in agricultural and landscaping products. So if you buy mulch, for example, sometimes it just comes with millipedes, and then you'll have these greenhouse millipedes there. Um, they're introduced from Southeast Asia originally, um, but nowadays they're all over the entire world. They're very, very common. Um, one of the best ways to identify them, I think that they look like a little string of beads usually. 
And uh, the best way to identify them unambiguously is that they have this little furrow across each of their segments. And if it has that furrow, that means it's a, uh, it's probably Oxidus gracilis or one of the related species that is also introduced. Another type of flatback millipede is Neoctodesmus salix. Again, it belongs to the order Polydesmida flatback millipedes. And they have a more uh, flattened back, usually shinier without hairs, with three rows of sort of raised blisters. They're like little polygonal areas on their backs. They're also related to this group, Cytonotus, um, which are really easy to distinguish because of the really, really bumpy backs with little hairs on each of the little uh, nodules. And then finally, um, this group that contains uh, the millipede genre, Zistocare and Harpaphy. So this group, uh, it's the family Zistodesmidae, I didn't write that down, but these guys are closely related. And they have bright warning coloration in general. So here in Zistocare, you can see that the edges of the, the back plates are orange. Here uh, for Harpaphy, the edges of the black plates are yellow. This helps them to inform predators that they're bad to eat. Um, so the predators can avoid eating them. Um, one of the chemical defenses they can use is cyanide. So again, you don't want to eat them. <laughs> and one of the really cool things about them is that they will fluoresce under ultraviolet light. So let's take a look at some footage of a Zistocare dissecta millipede that I collected again last week. Again, you can see tap, tap, tapping along with its antennae. Flatback millipedes are all blind, so they rely pretty much entirely on their antennae to get around. Here's the same millipede at night. I used uh, an ultraviolet flashlight in order to get the illumination for this. If you're interested in collecting fluorescent millipedes at night, you can get a ultraviolet flashlight for like 10 or $15 on Amazon and uh, just go find some trails at night, shine them on, on the ground and any millipedes um, or scorpions that are wandering around will just show up. You'll be able to collect them or at least uh, take a look at them. It's very cool. Um, and with that, I've covered the main millipede groups that you're likely to find here in Northern California. And I encourage you to check out all the other talks and events that are going on throughout the month of February um, for the UC Davis Biodiversity Museum, uh, Museum Month, I suppose, Biodiversity Museum Day.